Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a top four video of, of the deck that I played at a local League Cup. Uh, it was Espion Garbodor. Uh, it's a pretty standard build for it overall. Uh, a lot of people opt to play Vaporeon. I decided just to play the Flareon. I felt like Volcanion was a decent matchup as it was. Uh, besides, with like the Psychic and Confusion early, I don't really think you need the, the weakness factor. Um, but this is ultimately what I played. Uh, I'll just kind of give like a quick overview of what I played against. I played against Round 1 Zorark, which I ended up tying against. It's not the best matchup in the world, I would admit. Um, I actually got really lucky on some confusion flips. Uh, he flipped two tails for game when he was trying to attack. Uh, and that ultimately gave me a game, which I was able to tie the series with. But uh, I think once they hit Zorark breaks, it's just really strong because... You can't really watch out a Zorak break uh, with this deck because they'll have, unless they like have three energies on a Zorak break, which they almost never do, and you still you'd have to like put damage on it because of resistance. So it's just really hard uh, to one shot. But round two, I'm playing against Metagross, which is really easy for this deck. Honestly, uh, Garbo Toxin is just really strong against it. They have to waste a lot of resources to try to kill it or field blow it away, and. And then with Flareon too, you just get a free surprise knockout on any Metagross that you want as long as you have an EV on board. So, um, it ultimately, he did, like, he couldn't deal with Garbodor very well when, he, when we played. Um, he was just kept drawing into stuff. He got, like, Sycamore and Edding and to, to the point where he couldn't draw into Field Blower or just basically the combination of cards he needed to, to deal with it correctly. But, that's just this is one thing that's strong about it is because it's just hard to deal with if you don't draw draw absolutely everything you need. Uh, round three, I played against Vespa Queen. I actually played against my brother. Um, I know one of the games I got. I actually got very lucky throughout the entire series. Honestly, um, I I want to say it was either game one or game two. I late game Sycamore into three or four combination of cards that I needed for game. Um, it was very strong uh, I, I want to say it was game one but and I know game three he had game but he prized his last Vespa Queen um, he had one prized and he didn't have any kind of recovery to get it back so that ultimately lost him that game which honestly if he did have the Vespa Queen I would have lost uh, we were at a tie, point two where we couldn't ID just because we both already had a tie and we would have to win out the rest of the day, so we just decided to play it out. Uh, but ultimately, I ended up winning because I just got lucky, honestly. Uh, round four, I played against Decidueye Ninetales. Uh, he, this guy, like, I drew decently. Uh, I think he ultimately just, like, whiffed a lot of things. He missed DCE a lot. He missed, um, he missed, like, when he hit the Vioplum, he missed the Floodstone early, so he just had stuck it active for a while, and I was just pecking at it for a while. He was just Feather Arrowing active and passing for a lot of turns, but it ultimately just ended up... I ultimately was just able to get too much of a board state set up, and with Flurry out as well, it was just really strong, too. Um, and the hitting for 180 on a Decidueye is really good. Like, you've choice banned side beam them, you could two-shot it, so... And they have to flip to even Hollow Hut, like that's just really strong as well. Or if you even with the choice band at the thirty and they flip tails, that's that's enough too. But it's one of those things where I think Decidueye, like this variant has a pretty decent time against Decidueye, and the guy kind of just didn't draw what he needed to, so it just didn't work out very well. Uh, round five, I'm playing as Nine Tails. Um, that matchup, I got paired down. Uh, I was at ten match points. He was at eight. Uh, I knew I was guaranteed it, and basically I could just scoop to him if I wanted to and he would be guaranteed it. So I decided that we would play one game just to see how it went and he absolutely wrecked me so I decided to give it to him. Um, it just, I think Nightails could be a bad matchup for this deck as well because it's just really bulky with C's and you can't one shot it. Uh, they won't have you discarding you're discarding your energies with Blizzard Edge and if you hit the Kukui one shot like you could hit for two ten with Kukui so you can one shot Espeons so I think the matchup's not very good overall but I do think that it has potential to be good as well but at the same time I 
it's just more I think it's more in favor of Ninetales than anything else uh, because they also have a low item count as well so Garbodor doesn't really help you much they don't have a lot of like if they play the artillery version the Garbotoxin helps a little bit uh, which this person was uh, but I just could not get it out I might have even prized it the game that we played I'm not even sure but either way I got wrecked that game uh, top 8 I played against Gyarados which this has a really decent time against Gyarados uh, just because of Divide GX and also Oracorio swept me a game game 1 uh, actually well, it didn't sweep but it it gave me game because uh, I was able just to draw to Oracorio attached to it and then Olympia out of it like basically I had Oracorio I had the game at hand with Oracorio energy Olympia um on some magic harps because he had like four book one this card and two prizes left he had two magic harps with 20 uh pick off the two and game two i got off a really turn i think it was either turn two or turn three he had like three magic harps to play with 20 and then like a uh Lele. he started lele and it had like 60 on it because he retreated it and i was able to divide kill the three magic harps and hit the lele with a uh, one shot range and it was just really strong. There was just nothing else he could do about that. Um, so it ultimately ended up being, I guess that device is really strong against the deck. And I think ultimately, Gyarados can beat it. Um, Machoke was really, Machoke could be really strong against it. He just never got it out though. Um, so, and top four, I played against the Zora player again. Um, he, I tied him in the in Swiss. But he absolutely destroyed me in top four. Uh, he, at, I remember at four different points throughout top four, he ended up top decking the Zora break that he needed, uh, crucial moments. Uh, I shuffled his deck and everything else, so I know it wasn't like cheating or anything. But um, it's definitely like it's one of those things where luck is a factor in the game, and you can tell. Sometimes you can just tell the way someone's drawing. You can tell that they're just kind of destined to win, the, win this tournament. It sounds weird saying it like that, but it's something I've noticed playing the game is that if you're drawing hotter than the sun, you may be destined to win the tournament. Like, the, destined to, be play, to win whatever you're playing. Um, sometimes it's just people's time. And I think it was... Because he ultimately ended up did winning this tournament, so I think it was this player's time. He was from New Mexico. His name was Parker. He was a really cool guy. Um, actually but he uh the way he was drawing with the deck and he was playing it, he played it well too and obviously he deserved it but um the way he was drawing you could tell that he was pretty set to win it just off of off of draws but um uh, I think like I said the matchup's not the greatest just because if they do hit the Zorak break it's just really strong against you and you can't one shot it back, and you have to confuse it, and they stand it to get out of confusion, and it's just overall not good for you. Um, but uh, overall, the list was pretty strong. Uh, I would change a few cards for sure. Uh, I would take out the Olympia and play a third Floodstone because I was expecting Waterbox to be big since it won our last League Cup but absolutely no one played it because of Vespa Queen. So I would take out Olympia for that. And other than that, Oracorio, <coughs> excuse me, Oracorio is pretty good um, against Gyarados and against like one or two other decks like Vespa Queen, I played against it. I hit Oracorio for game. But other than that, like I don't think I'd play it moving forward. I just lost connection. I don't think I'd play it moving forward, though, just because of the... Honestly, best book queen players can just get around it when it's all said and done. So... It's one of those things where I think ultimately... Oh, I won't let me lock my kid. Uh, well, sorry about that. Just put my site went down in the middle of recording, so that's fun but that was the list it was very it's very straightforward um if you're at this point in the video thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it it helps me out a lot um 
all the normal social media handles, uh, Pokemon, or Chubby Chalupa, TCG, uh, Twitch.tv is my Twitch. I'll be streaming a little bit. I need to start streaming a little bit more often. Uh, I've kind of fallen off on that. Even posting videos, I've been kind of falling off, but I'll be start. I need to start doing a little bit more for that. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Um, post comments, post. If you think my lists are, sh are bad, you can totally tell me. Like, any kind of criticism is good criticism. Um, Twitter, Crabber Nothing 914. Uh, mainly just post updates, posting a lot of other things too, uh, starting out. And then. Uh, Chubby Chalupa TCG and Facebook uh, again just more or less just posting updates and stuff like that but um, now that was that was kind of my turn report for SBL Garb I would definitely play the deck moving forward uh, I think it's really strong against most of the meta game I think if you're if you expect a lot of Zork in your in your meta game I probably that's when I probably wouldn't play it but I think it has a decent time against everything else uh, Night Tales again could also be pretty bad too um Vika is alright too it depends on like the Bulu counts and stuff like that they play heavy Coco it could be really bad too cause they have the ability to get out of Coco so ultimately or get out of Confusion rather but I think that ultimately it's one of those it's one of those things where I think it just depends on the way, the way they draw. If you have Garbotoxin, it's really strong against the deck too. Um, Hexamaniac's really strong against Vika. But I think that ultimately it has a good solid matches across the board, and I'll probably be testing it more for internationals, which is about three weeks. Um, I'll be posting a lot of a lot of decks, trying to do a lot of testing uh, throughout for internationals. So hopefully I can bring you guys some good content with that. Uh, but thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and this is how I did in top four at one of my local league cups. And I hope you guys got some bit for that on the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>